Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And right here we have a bunch of warm water with no acid in it currently. And I am going to add some leftover purpley dyes. Now there is no acid in this pot currently. Um, if there is any, it would have been accidental. This was sort of a double boiler situation. But there has been acid in this yarn. This skein of Knit Picks Swish DK has soaked in some water with vinegar for a long time. A lot of vinegar, multiple days, and well, we're going to go into this nice warm dye bath right now. So one thing that we can imagine happening right off the bat is that the acid in that yarn um, could allow some of this color to start striking really, really fast. But the other thing that you can imagine is that since there was some acid in the yarn, once you rinse it out, you start to neutralize it a little bit again. And so the massive amount of water in here will dilute that acid. So I'm just curious what we might see. The pot is already fairly warm. I am going to turn on the heat and just stir this up a little bit. Normally, I don't bother pre-soaking my yarn in vinegar unless I am going to hand paint it. And certainly, I do see some uneven unevenness of the color absorption on this skein already. And honestly, I think that a big culprit could be that some of those colors started striking quickly because of the acid in the yarn, but we won't really know. I'm expecting to get a beautiful tonal yarn out of this no matter what. But let's go ahead and heat this for 30 minutes and see how much of that color absorbs. Again, there's a lot of acid that was soaked in with that skein, and I definitely had ooh, about 19 cups of water initially here in this pan, um, so that's a lot of water, and yeah, I'm just curious <laughs> to see what will happen. After 20 minutes, most of this color has absorbed. Uh, so clearly, I would just say that the yarn brought in enough acid for that to happen. I'm going to go ahead and dump the rest of this pre-soak with all of its vinegar in here. Oh no. And make a mess and pour it everywhere. I just poured the rest of the pre-soak water and all of its vinegar into the pot. And I am going to heat things up until we get to a nice little simmer again, but then I will turn off the heat completely um, since that color has almost completely absorbed. Is this a true experiment? No. There are a lot of things outside of our control. I don't remember how much vinegar was in that pre-soak. At least probably four or five, six tablespoons of vinegar. A lot. And so the volume that the yarn had in it, even though it wasn't dripping, is significant um, and enough to let those colors absorb because I see colors start to absorb even with no vinegar if you allow it enough time. So would you be interested in seeing me do sort of like a side-by-side -side yarn pre-soaked in vinegar versus not? Uh, see if we see the difference between like soaking the yarn in a vinegar solution versus adding the vinegar in the pot when we start off? Clearly, the vinegar in the pot would be more acidic, but maybe maybe I could do some like volume calculations to kind of try to control for that. But anyway, yeah, I guess just curiosity and seeing like how fast colors strike and how what kind of if we see any major differences between the yarns. I'm not sure if we would see any major differences, but if you think that that sounds like a fun idea, uh, let me know in the comments uh, and maybe I will give it a shot sometime soon. The dye bath has completely cleared and we have our beautiful tonal yarn here ready to wash. I'm not expecting there to be any bleeding whatsoever here. Uh, but it's just fun 
yeah, that is looking totally, totally fine. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to rinse out all of this soap, put the yarn through my spoon dryer, hang it up to dry, and we'll come back with some final conclusions. But I absolutely love this color. This purple is so beautiful. I love purples that are on the more blue side versus pink side. And this is a great tonal. The variation in here is pretty low, so I think this yarn would hold up really nicely with some complex stitch patterns. Or just bring some really nice depth to a simpler pattern. I am really excited to play around more with semi-solids and tonals. I don't film them as much just because I feel like it's not necessarily as exciting to watch, but they honestly are some of my favorite yarns to knit with. So I think that in this year, I really want to challenge myself to explore these semi-solids and tonals um, and play around with more really subtle colorways and play around with adding depth and dimension but very softly and subtly, even if I'm doing more saturated colors. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I can't ever bring myself to leave any dye behind. And sometimes we end up creating just gorgeous, simple colorways with this leftover dye. If you don't want to miss any new content, make sure you subscribe and press that bell icon to turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. And if you're a longtime Chemnitz fan and want to support us on another level, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You'll find a link in the video description and iCard. Thank you so much for watching.